Are you tired of dealing with shoulder pain every time you bench press? Well, you're in luck. Today, guys, I'm going to give you a five-step process to fix that nagging shoulder pain so you can get back to bench pressing 100% pain-free. Let's get to it. Step one for fixing that shoulder pain when bench pressing, find some light weights. Now, I'm gonna give Micah some one-pound weights here, but if you're at the gym, use either your body weight or maybe the two and a half pound change plates if you can find them. You're gonna do what's called the lock three shoulder routine. Hands by the side is step one. You're gonna grip the weights, which is gonna light up your rotator cuff muscles, so grip this weight hard. From here, you're going to pick your hands up and set the weights down slowly. I want you to do 15 reps right here. Now, this whole routine is something that I learned from Dr. Andrew Locke, and it's a great routine to hit these posterior shoulder muscles. One of the main reasons many people develop shoulder pain in the first place when bench pressing is because we're so dominant anterior with our pressing and the backside is not as balanced. So we lead to a problem in shifting the shoulder joint and overloading the front side, we develop shoulder pain. So our first step is to engage these back muscles, your rotator cuff muscles, your rhomboids, your mid, your low trap, and your lats to teach yourself to have more balance. So step one is 15 to 20 reps with palms up with light weight. Don't over retract your shoulder blades, just focus on the hands. Step two, you're now going to go palms down. Again, you're gonna go through the same thing. 15 to 20 reps, just focus on picking the hands up and setting them back down without over retracting the rhomboids to pull your shoulder blades together. So just have all your focus on your hands. If you're a little bit of a bigger guy and it's hard for you to get your arms close to your side, you're just gonna try to bring your hands as close to your hips as you can without causing any pain maybe in your shoulder or your lats cramping. So if you have to have a slight angle, that's okay. But something like this, you're really going to hit the rotator cuff muscles in the back side of the shoulder and you'll feel your mid and low trap working pretty good here as well. After 15 reps, you're now going to go out to the side. You're gonna adopt a T position right here. From here again, same thing, focus on the hands lifting and slowly setting them back down. A cue that can work well for some people is to think of eggshells down here where your hands are coming back down. Don't slam them down and break the eggshell. Again, we're not over retracting the shoulder blades, we're just picking the hands up and slowly setting them back down. This is going to be a little bit more of the upper shoulders than the lower shoulders with your hands by your side. If you feel your upper traps kicking on too much, just pull your shoulder blades down and back into your back pockets just a little bit and you'll get away from that over trap or that upper trap shrugging a little too much. So again, we have three different positions, 15 to 20 reps a piece slowly with light weight. That's the lock three and that's step one to fixing your shoulder plane. Let's go to step two. Step two, what we're going to do, take a foam roller and place it right here. We're gonna grab some light weight. I got a five pounder right here, but again, if you're dealing with pretty severe shoulder pain, you may need to start even lighter. From here, you're going to externally rotate up and back down. Now it's key with this to make sure that you're not pulling your shoulder blade back. Lock that shoulder into position and get pure external rotation. You don't wanna see that shoulder blade moving a lot and cheating with your rhomboids. But this is going to work your infraspinatus muscle of your rotator cuff that helps create and maintain external rotation torque. And again, for a lot of people that develop shoulder pain on the front side, this backside is pretty weak. You're gonna do 15 to 20 reps slowly. So again, you're not gonna go fast and you're gonna have some pauses in a couple positions on the way back down. Only go to about that parallel position. If you go too far down, a lot of people are gonna start rolling that shoulder forward. We don't want that. So keep your shoulder into a good position. And here's what's also key is the foam roller. By having your elbow elevated a little bit, what does this look like? Sort of the position that that bar is going to come down when you're bench pressing. We're not flaring our elbows out, but we're also not doing a close grip bench where that elbow is literally almost touching your side. So having this foam roller here is going to make the external rotation stability that you're creating a little bit more position specific to the bench press where you're gonna have a slight tuck of the elbow underneath the barbell as you engage your lats. So this is step two, external rotation. If you're doing this correctly, lateral shoulders are gonna be burning like crazy. Let's go to step three. Step three, we're gonna do a banded bench press. Now, if you have a pre-made banded loop, that's awesome. But if you don't, here's what you're gonna do instead. A lot of gyms will have a very skinny monster band. You're gonna double loop that, place it around your wrist, and we're gonna get into our bench press position. Hands up like you're starting your bench press. 
What you're going to do is break the band. So engage your lateral shoulder muscles by tensioning the band. And then you're gonna go slowly through your bench press, maybe about five seconds down and five seconds up. This should be difficult if you're using enough tension. But the idea is that a lot of people will develop shoulder pain on the front side of their shoulder because again, the back side and lateral side of the shoulder that are supporting the joint, they're not working as optimally, so we have an unstable joint. By tensioning this band, you can see his arms shaking so much. They're stabilizing that joint. So you're gonna be very fatigued if doing this correctly. Six to 10 reps, based on how many you can actually do without any pain. If you feel any pain, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna come down a little bit. If you feel pain, tension it even more, break that band, and then continue through. So this should be completely pain-free as you go through. That's probably good for Micah right there. But again, banded bench press is step three. Let's go to step four. Step four, kettlebell upside down bench press. Make sure you put your fingers into your core first. Stiffen your core. Even though this is an upside down kettlebell press, this is a full body movement if done correctly. So you're gonna put your fingers into your stomach. Brace in a way that push your fingers to the side. So stiffen this up. Now you're gonna link your core to your upper shoulder by pulling down into the bench. So you're gonna engage that upper back. You can see how he does that well here. And then while this is engaged, he's going to perform his upside down kettlebell bench. Now, if everything is locked in from his core to his lat, to his elbow positioned under the bar and then back up, you're gonna see this bell not fall over. And that's what's key. Because the bell has all of its weight away from his hand, it's going to be naturally unstable. So he has to really stabilize his entire system to keep the bell from falling over. If he does not lock in his core, his lat's not engaged, and he's not stable through the whole system, the bell will fall over. So let's see what that does. Like that, so we don't want that. Now, here's something to think about. If you can bench press 225 pounds, you should be able to do this with close to a 40 pound kettlebell. So if you're struggling with a very light weight, but you can bench press over 225, you have some work to do to have the stability in your shoulder support the weight that you can push. And stability is key for being able to produce your strength. So that is step four. Let's go to the last step. Step five and the last step for fixing shoulder pain when bench pressing is learning how to engage your upper back correctly when you get under the bar and then including some slow tempo work back into your training, especially in your warmups. Now, when you bench press, yes, it's shoulders, yes, it's chest, yes, it's triceps, but it's a lot of back. And the best bench pressers in the world know how to engage this correctly. When you get set up in your bench, arms are straight out in front, you are going to pull your shoulder blades back and down. This is going to engage your lats and your rhomboids to set your back into a strong, powerful position. So again, let's do that one more time. So it's back and down. Think, put your shoulder blades into your back pockets. All these muscles are gonna be clinched like crazy. Then you bench press. So let's see what that looks like. So as he gets set up into his bench press, He's going to pull himself together and engage that upper back like crazy. Then we get ready to perform the bench and we're gonna perform a five second negative with a three second pause. Okay, let me know. Okay, his upper back is engaged. Five, four, three, two, one. Three second pause, one, two, three, press. Let's do one more of those. The whole time he's focusing on pulling that bar down with his upper back and a slow tempo drill will expose inefficiencies in your ability to stabilize. So slow tempo teaches you how to own every aspect of the bench press to make sure that you have great technique that's locked in. And if you have great technique that's locked in, there's less energy leakage and less chance for tissues to get overloaded that create pain. So this is the last step after everything else that we've done that will help you get out of back pain, back pain, out of shoulder pain, and get back to lifting big weights pain-free. All right, so let's talk briefly about how you're gonna program this into your bench day when you're dealing with shoulder pain. Now, we're gonna start off every single bench day with the lock three. Again, guys, this is lightweight, one set of each of those three repetitions, 15 to 20 reps. Go directly to your external rotation drills, one to two sets based on how you're feeling. We have the banded bench, six to 10 reps. Go directly to your upside down kettlebell bench, just two sets of five to 10 reps 
and then you're gonna go into your slow tempo bench. So for right now, because you're having pain with bench press, this needs to be light enough and slow enough to where it does not create pain, but we're still able to work the bench. So at first you're gonna have to take weight off and this may be as low as 30, 40% of your one rep max. And then slowly over time, you can up the weight back. But this whole routine as a whole should take no more than 15 to 20 minutes. And remember, at this time, when you're dealing with shoulder pain, you need to take a step back from your performance programming. So know that you will be spending a little bit more time with your rehab work on your warm up. And then as you get out of pain, what you can do is you can find the ones that you like the most, the ones that you feel give your shoulders the most pre fatigue, the best warm up. And I still want you to use those as a warm up before you get into the gym and bench press. So don't just walk in, throw some weight on the bar and start going. Find the ones that you enjoyed the most one or two of these, and I want you to use those going forward as warmups just to make sure that you're getting the most out of your workout and making sure that you're addressing the root cause behind your prior injury so it doesn't come back. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to fix shoulder pain, check out my injury fix book, Rebuilding Milo on amazon.com. And if you wanna learn more about bench press technique to take your bench to the next level, check out this video I did with the strongest bench presser in the world, Julius Maddox. It's the ultimate bench press tutorial. See you next time, guys.